So, let's have a look at the first uh, exercise in this course. What do we have here? We have our uh, radial grid model. The grid is pretty straightforward. We have uh, one generator down here, the size of which you can see here. It's a 600 MVA, uh, 510 megawatt, and uh, inertia or time constant of the rotor that is 2H equal to 10 seconds. Then we have the 20 kilovolt bus, step up transformer from 20 to 220 kilovolt up here. Then we have a transmission line, the uh, receiving bus at uh, 220 kilovolt, step down transformer, 20 kilovolt, and the load down here. Uh, data of transformer and lines, you can see reported uh, on the left. Right now, we just keep the focus on the uh, consequence on the frequency because of our load step. In the next classes, we will be analyzing more in detail the various information of generator, transformer, and lines. But just to get a broad picture, the transformers, they are both 600 MVA, and we just have the reactants, uh, the serious reactants in the model. So we're not considering any resistive effect or any kind of uh, losses. Um, then we have the line, that is uh, 457, megavolt ampere. Also in this case, we just uh, have the uh, reactance X, the series reactance of the wires. So we don't have any resistance, we don't have any capacitance, any shunt capacitance. And then the load, it's uh, just pure active power load, so it's consuming 100 megawatt and no megavolt ampere. As we will see, in a short while in Power Factory, we are taking as a reference bus or as a select bus, so the bus where the angle is equal to zero degrees, the one on the load. And at the same time, we are also controlling the reactive power of the generator so that uh, the generator will make sure that the voltage at the load bus will be equal to one per unit. The event that we will be analyzing is uh, increase in the consumption of the load equal to 1%. Now, let's go into Power Factory and let's see the grid that we just saw on the slide. So, let's open the um, project. You remember that from the data manager, you can always navigate all the information that are reported in the project, specifically under the grid subfolder, we have an overview of the buses, the components, the different elements, and the dynamic models associated. So as I mentioned right now, let's just focus on this uh, frequency event. So we have the grid here, okay? You can see the various elements. So in this case, we have the generator. Just to get a quick look at the load flow page of the generator, we can see that uh, the, there is a device there is an element that is called station control, which is replacing the local voltage controller. So this uh, element is actually the one that will make sure that uh, the generator will be controlling the voltage at this bus, okay, according to a certain set point. Yes, uh, keep in mind that since we have just one generator in the system, it doesn't matter what is the dispatched active power simply because power factory will override any kind of set point that we set in here because it needs to use the generator to balance out all the active and the reactive power in the system. Then we have our load here. As you can see, we have been dispatching the load with a consumption of 100 megawatt of active power and no reactive power. Okay, so we can now see the, um, we can now analyze what is happening into the system. So as always, let's start with a load flow. We will be performing a balanced load flow. So just consider the positive sequence because all uh, phases are actually, all consumption and generation on the different phases is the same. So we can simplify and consider an equivalent single phase. Uh, system. 
you will notice here that uh, this uh, option is flagged because it's quite important because we want to make sure that uh, if there is any kind of excess of reactive power consumption, then uh, it will be popped up a warning saying that in case a generator is going to produce beyond its capability, then uh, that will not be allowed. Or if it is just one generator, it will be given a warning that is working outside its, um, its range. And one last important thing to analyze is that uh, we are considering also that all loads have, um, are allowed to change or adjust the power consumption if there is any kind of voltage dependency activated. And that we will uh, note much better in the second part of the uh, exercise. As I mentioned, we are, uh, let's say, if we don't select anything specific, then the standard approach is that power factory will set the slack on the reference machine. So in this case, that's the only generator, so that this bus will be considered a slack bus. But if we want, we can just set another reference bus. It doesn't really matter because in the end, there is always the freedom to appoint one bus into the system as the slack uh, bus. So as the bus that has an angle equal to zero degrees. So just for simplicity, we want to make sure, well, we want to have the load bus as a slack bus. So with an angle equal to zero. So we perform our load flow. Okay, you can see the results displayed. The load is consuming 100 megawatt as it should it's not consuming any reactive power. Voltage at this pass is one per unit because the generator is making sure that this voltage is according to the dispatch value and the angle is equal to zero because that's for us, our slack. Uh, going backwards, we see that uh, the active power throughout all the measurement point on transformer lines and so on, it's always 100 megawatt. And then this makes perfectly sense because we are not considering any resistive element in our system. So we don't have any active power loss, but we do have reactive power losses. So the elements in the system need some reactive power to get uh, magnetized. So specifically, this transformer will be consuming a couple of megavolt ampere reactive. That's pretty much the uh, power that is necessary to magnetize the, uh, react the series reactances of the transformer. The same way the line, will be consuming a certain amount of reactive inductive power. Remember that we're not considering any capacitive effect. And the other transformer on the other end is also consuming its share of reactive power. Of course, the generator will be the one providing this 12.3 megavolt ampere necessary. Also notice that uh, since we need, or we set a voltage value equal to one per unit here, the voltage at this bus has to be slightly higher in order to allow the flow of the reactive power through the system and magnetize the different components. So it makes sense that this voltage is a little bit higher. At the same time, it also makes sense that this voltage has an angle that is a little bit uh, leading the angle uh, throughout the system. Why? Because we have active power that is flowing throughout the system. And in order to ensure that active power is flowing, we need to have a displacement of the different uh, uh, voltage angle of the different voltage phasor throughout the system. As you will see, the angle is going from zero degrees, 1.1, 5.9, 7 degrees, and so on. And of course, it will depend on the amount of uh, uh, reactance. So in this case, the contribution of the react to the overall system reactance is coming uh, mostly from the line, okay? But then we have our system. Uh, we have a feasible uh, solution. We have a load flow that is converging and we are fine. So actually, let's see now the dynamic analysis. You will see that under the event, I can set the load event, or as we will see later, also short circuit events or generator events and, and so on. So the load event that is already preset is providing uh, this kind of information. So it's saying, let's control the load one. Let's make a step with an amplitude that is 1%, okay, at t equal to zero. Actually, if we want to be precise, the first kind of uh, operation that we should do is to perform a dynamic simulation without any 
event because we want to be sure that actually nothing is happening in the system if we don't perturb the system. So the first thing to do is actually to switch off. So put out of service our load event. So right now, nothing is going to happen into the system. So if we perform a dynamic simulation, the RMS simulation that we will be using throughout the course, we should experience no uh, movement in the states in the system, no movement in the voltage, in the frequency, and so on. We perform our simulation for 20 seconds. Just scale the results, and in this uh, plot, in these four plots, we can see some of the states of our system. We can see, for instance, uh, for the conventional unit, so for our generator, the variable is called x speed. That is the normalized rotational speed of the generator. And we know that based on the rotational speed of the generator, we can derive the frequency. So I'm uh, reading the frequency as a multiplication of uh, 50 times the nominal speed of the generator, which is reported in per unit. So that's why you have this normalized value that is 1 divided 50. And we can see here the value. You see that is uh, 50. You can also click on the line, and you will see the result displayed here, 50.000. So that's uh, very much what we should expect. We can also see uh, other variables in the system. So for instance, we can see here the active power production from the generator, which is equal to 100 megawatt. That makes perfectly sense. It's not moving because nothing is happening to the system. OK, so we have our active power production. The other two variables that is worth analyzing at this point in time are also the normalized power on the shaft seen from the turbine point of view. So seen from the prime mover, so the steam turbine in this case that is driving our electrical generator, and seen from the uh, synchronous machine point of view, so seen from the electrical generator itself. So in this case, the two lines are just overlapping. They are one on the other. And this is OK, because we don't have any uh, variation in our system. So the amount of power that the prime mover, so the mechanical steam turbine, is producing is equal to the amount of power, electrical power, that the generator is injecting into the system. Yes. So we can see that the system is stable and there is nothing happening. So that's very good. So now let's reinitialize the simulation. Always reinitialize the simulation whenever you are going to change some events here. Hmm? Let's put our event in service right now. And let's perform our analysis. So let's make 10 seconds simulation. So what do we have now? We have that uh, something happened in the system. Actually, we can see better uh, the situation, so the states, the different variables at the end of the dynamic simulation, so at the end of our 10 seconds of simulation in the layout, we can see that the load increased the power consumption of 1 megawatt. So right now it's 101 megawatt, as we should expect. We can also see that uh, uh, the generator also increased the consumption, the production one megawatt, and that's okay. You will notice also that's quite important for uh, the following part of the analysis that the reactive power increased a little bit. Why is that? That is because we increase the active power flowing through the system. We increase the current flowing through the system. That means that we increase the reactive power losses. Uh, on the line and on the transformer. So this value slightly increased as a consequence of the increase of the active power consumption at this point. Remember that you can also see a log of the events that happen during the dynamic simulation down here in this dialog page. And, and you see here that Power Factory is reporting that the load flow went fine and so on as before but that this time we had uh, an event at equal to zero, and uh, that event was an increase on load one, 1% 1 active power, as we uh, set Power Factory to do. Now let's go back to the dynamic results. So that's the first interesting thing to observe. So our generator, active power production that you can see here, 
increased pretty much instantly, one megawatt. Why? Because our load increased the consumption one megawatt, and we always need to fulfill Kirchhoff current law. So if the current is increasing somewhere in the grid, then that current must be supplied by someone else. So in this case, our generator makes sure instantly that the load receives the requested current. And you can see this information also reflected in the electrical power uh, normalized output. You will see that uh, this value is a little bit below 0 0.2 per unit. And this is uh, this makes sense because the nominal active power of our generator is 510 megawatt. So our 100 or 101 megawatt divided 510 megawatt will result in a value that is a little bit less than 20% or 0 0.2. But let's go back to the two curves here. So we have the electrical power increasing instantly, and we do have the mechanical power that follows, but can't increase instantly because of dynamics in the prime mover. We can't increase the amount of steam flowing in the turbine uh, instantly, so that takes uh, a while not so long, so a few uh, hundred of milliseconds or a few seconds, depending on the dynamic of the, prim of the prime mover. In this case, just as a note, this unit is extremely fast because it has equipped with fast valving capabilities, so it's uh, very good at following changes in the, in the output. Nonetheless, it takes a while, and we do have this difference between the two power, so the mechanical power driving the generator and the electrical power which is supplied uh, into the grid. And this, as we analyzed in the equation during the class, is basically uh, representing this dynamic that we see here. So we have an imbalance between the two power, we have an imbalance between the two torques, and this translates into a dynamic of the rotational speed of the generator, that means into a dynamic of the electrical frequency of our grid. You see that the frequency, as expected, is declining because we have an excess of consumption compared to the production. At a certain point, once the mechanical power match, matches again the electrical power, the frequency will stabilize. We call this point nadir, which is the lowest frequency throughout our dynamic simulation. Afterwards, we have a uh, uh, higher amount of mechanical power compared to the electrical power. The frequency increases again. And then hopefully, in this case, we get a new steady state. Lower frequency, but still a stable frequency. If we want to be completely sure that this value is actually a new steady state, so that this value is actually a feasible operating point, we need to continue the simulation just a bit longer in order to be 100% sure that uh, there are no further oscillation. And as you can see, this is pretty much the steady state value that we reach. So it's a frequency, 49.996, a bit lower compared to the nominal one, uh, and also compared to the initial one. And this uh, makes sense because we increased a little bit the load in our system. But this is uh, OK. So system is under control because we have our governor. So as we will see, a bit more in detail in the next few classes. The governor, so the whole set of uh, control system and equipment that uh, drives the electrical generator is working fine. It's performing this control action and the frequency, so that means the rotational speed of the generator is under control. So let's see now uh, what's going to happen if we take our governor out of service so that we see uh, that we can recreate the case that we analyzed on the blackboard when we did the hand calculation. So we need to switch off our governor. Okay, do, where do we find that? Always start from the data manager, network model, network data, grid, and you see here the composite model that contains the different uh, dynamic models of our conventional unit. It's pretty simple because we just have two dynamic models, one for the AVR, so the automatic voltage regulator, and the other one for the governor. So what we do now is we simply take out of the game the governor. So that will be put out of service. Again, we keep the same uh, load step and we rerun the simulation. Let's make again 10 seconds. 
So what's happening now? It's happening that uh, we don't have anything that is going to control the steam turbine and is going to uh, command to force an increase in the power output of the steam turbine. So the mechanical power from the generator will remain the same as the initial value. The electrical power will increase as a consequence of the increase of the electrical consumption. And we keep on having this mismatch between the consumed power into the system and the produced power by the uh, mechanical uh, part of the generator, so by the, the steam turbine. This difference translates in a linear, this constant difference translates in a linear decrease of the frequency. You will notice, however, that uh, at the end of our 10 seconds simulation, our frequency value will not be the 49.5 that we would expect by the hand calculation that we did before, but it's way more than uh, uh, expected. So why is that? This is because the 1% that we have been setting in our system is 1% referred to the current consumption of our load. Okay, our load was consuming 100 megawatt and now it's consuming 1% more. Be aware that all the calculations that we did before by hand are normalized uh, calculations. So they are taking in, in account normalization per unit values and so on. And we need to be always careful, as I stated, that we uh, make sure that the per unit values that we are setting are actually in line with what are with what we should expect. So specifically, one percent in this formula would refer to the base power that was taken in consideration when normalizing all the values, and the base power in this case is 600 MVA. So that means it is. 1% refer to the nominal rating of the generator, not 1% refer to the current operating point of the load. So that's why the two values don't match. So what do we do now? We adjust the load event so that actually we can recreate the very same situation. So in this case, since we have a rating of the generator that is 600 MVA, our load step needs to be 6% if we want to have the 1% normalized that we had uh, in the calculation. So we set it to 6% and perform again our simulation. We see that now the load increases 6 megawatt from 100 megawatt to 106. And we see now that uh, the frequency goes down, down to 49.5 Hertz as we were expecting. Also, this makes perfectly sense because now we have the uh, load increase that is six times larger. So the difference between the mechanical power and the electrical power is six times larger. And that means that the frequency will keep on declining much more than expected. So that we now uh, recreated the exact case. So I think that's enough for this part of the video. And then we can see in the following video what is happening when we actually change also the inertia and what is happening when we change the characteristic, the voltage characteristic of the load.